So I have got a problem cell builder. And the problem is, they're not raising any queens. I don't like saying it, but it has got a urine smell to it. Still so we'll load the wax basket with some fresh cappings and I'll show you how it works. And then I spotted our nukes. That ain't great, is it? So good morning and welcome back to another weekly video. So I learnt an interesting thing last week. So frogs jump, toads crawl. So if you're watching this for the first time, jump back, watch last week's video and you'll get what I'm on about. So if you're watching this for the first time, welcome. And welcome back if you're a returning viewer. So I've got a little bit of a dilemma. As some of you will know, the regular viewers, we've obviously taken on a unit and the electrician's due this week to fit lights and whatnot, sockets. But I have a couple of pallets of wet supers in the unit and the Sparky isn't that keen on working around the bees. So I've told him I'm a beekeeper, not Dr. Doolittle. There's not much I can do about it other than move these nukes. So these nukes are right by the unit. Obviously, long term, it's not ideal. They need to be moved anyway, because when it comes to extracting, we don't want to be overrun with bees ourselves, do we? So plan today, I've missed a couple of showers. I'm hoping I've not missed my window full stop. It is due to rain again. It's quite misty, but there's loads and loads of flies, as you can see, which isn't helping. So I'm going to move these nukes out of here up to Taylor's, I think. There's a nice little uh, SFI crop gone in there. So I'll leave a couple of nooks behind, obviously. All these flying bees will go into there, and then I can hopefully control how many bees are going into the unit when the electricians are working in there. As you can see, plenty of bees, plenty of flight. So I'll get these uh, corralled up and out of the way. That stuff's cleared. I'll tell you what, it's not sunny, and it's damp, but God, it's humid today. That burning that in mind, I don't want to hang about too much with these bees in the back. So these are all loaded up. I've left, I think there's two, so there's two nukes and a hive here, just to catch some stragglers. We're fully loaded up. Not too bad, we have got the uh, the fan that spins around when we're driving on top of this. So it does circulate the air inside, but there'll be some heat generated in there. I'll get gone, return back for these. It's forecast to pour down again around midday. So hopefully I can get these rounded up when it's, uh, when it's pouring down later. So don't ever say, I can't multitask, modern man and all that. So we've come to drop the nukes off, but we've got the twins with us. So a bit of daddy daycare as well. My Vic uh, goes to an appointment. So there's some low spots in this cover crop here. I'll actually show you. Yeah. Uh, some low spots, so I'm just gonna dot the nukes in amongst these. Also we've got the butt wheat the buckwheat, the sunflowers are coming up there's actually quite a lot of buckwheat in this one so it should bring these nukes on no end and give them plenty of winter stores times that I've seen you lose your way you're not in control and you won't be told all I can do to Safe is hold you close, hold you close till you can breathe on your own. Till you can breathe on your own. Hold tight, you're slowly coming back to life. I've been giving you hell, I've been giving you hell, darling. Let go. So Facili and Mustard up there. The Facili's looking great. Really coming to now. Can actually smell it, it's got a lovely smell to it. So it's all coming up, it's still a long, long way to go, yes. But very much in flower. Ah, there you go. And another one. So the bees are well and truly working the Facilia. Which is a good thing. And the mustard is still looking fantastic. As you can see, it's got that smell to it, it's mega. There's a little bit of facility coming up in here as well. So yeah, that was looking great. I've 
brought six hives with me. No, it was forecast to be pouring down when I left. It's uh, bone dry and rather warm. So I'll not hang about as they're all closed up in the back. I'm either gonna make another trip now, bring uh, another six, or I might leave it to tomorrow morning. I'm going to Liverpool one to, uh, to remove the supers so I can get those extracted for the guys on site. I've just come up to the pumpkins to uh, drop some more nukes off and I noticed all this seed trays for the pumpkins are blown all over. And then I spotted our nukes. That ain't great, is it? them up hopefully there's no damage uh, straight let's put my suit on we'll attempt him for turn it's all right up on the roof of Liverpool one again it's bright and early we have to be early because we have to get in the loading bay but it's time to take the honey off these hives up on the roof so that's honey pulled need to get it out to be quick with a little bit of wasp pressure now at this time of year so we'll get that extracted and then some of these guys at Liverpool one can enjoy this honey. <laughs> I left Liverpool, it was glorious sunshine and cracking the flags and we've come over to Scammers Ricks, Gays, Ricks, Gersbrook, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's a bit dull, a bit grey. Potential rain clays, but there is a massive flow on still here. These bees are busy. So a definite flight line from over that way, which is the opposite direction than the clover. And I still haven't brought any blocks for these this half stand. Keep forgetting, I need to sort that out. Pull my finger out. On this side, clear buds were set the other week. So we're gonna pull those. So it's a case of going around all these sites today, pulling super, setting clear boards. I would normally have my trail with me, but unfortunately it's a little bit pooler. So it's gone in for service and it turns out it's in a pretty bad way. We all send our cars in for MOTs, in for services, things like that, our trucks and whatever. But I think forget about the trailers. Obviously the reports come back and turns out had I had an accident with that trailer, they would have thrown the book at me. It was in a pretty bad state. So they just get overlooked, don't they? They get stuck into storage, into the garage or whatever, onto the driveway. And we just take them for granted a little bit. So if you're running a trailer of any description, towing hives and supers and think anything about get them serviced get them checked it's not worth the risk so i've just started pulling our ragwort honey so if you saw the video the other week you'll know exactly what i'm on about it's a really bright colored i don't know what it says about me but i actually enjoy the taste of it but a few people said it's disgusting so it's what i'd consider this time around pure ragwort honey just because of the color and the quantity of it we, although we all must have had ragwort in our honey at one time or another obviously just not to the amount that affects it and a few people in the comments said it stinks it tastes horrible like i say i don't know what it says about my palate i didn't mind it but left for 12 months all that disappears so like i said i've just removed these supers these are the first what i consider ragwort supers and admittedly it has got a little bit of a whiff so what would i liken it to I don't like saying it, but it has got a urine smell to it. Still urine, um, I think is a fur comment. Not really offensive. I don't want to sound ridiculous now, I know that urine can't be offensive, but um, I don't know, it's just got a whiff of something. Yeah, the guys in the comments were right. There is something about it. Like I said, I don't find it uh, repulsive. But uh, again, that just could be my senses. We will extract it, I'll keep it to one side. Well, give it the benefit of the doubt, give it a sniff test in about 12 months time or whatever. And if it's fine, we'll, uh, obviously we'll, we'll be able to use it. At the moment, it won't be getting mixed in with anything else. Worrying though, if it is that bad, I have another half dozen hives or something around the corner, about four or five supers on each, full of it. So I best be able to make some use out of it. Some more clear boards going on these, uh, call them the ragwort hives, shall we? Very, very busy still. Might even need more space again, these. 
It's meant to be coming to the end of the season. That's Vic there, seeing what time I'm going to get done. Um, so yeah, clear your boards on and I'll weigh up whether we actually put more supers on or whether they've enough space in the brew box to start storing a bit. Come to our nuke yard. So I have got a problem cell builder. And the problem is, they're not raising any queens. So I've put one rain of grass through it, which was successful, I had a great uh, graft from them. I put the second round in the other day and they're not raised any cells. Now, could be my grafting, I do get that, but I've never had a blank yet. It's just unusual to have no acceptance whatsoever. So I'm gonna go through with a fine tooth comb, just see what's going on. I did go through the other day just have a quick look they've left space down in the brew box as if they're waiting for something to start laying but again no sign of any app cells unless i've missed a, a cup that's fell off the bar or something like that i don't know but we need to go in there because at the moment the cell build that won't do anything and as i suspected we have a virgin running around in the bottom of the box I didn't think it was my grafting. So I've had myself a little accident. I've dropped one of, my, one of my Abello supers. So I'm going to attempt to glue it. I've got some Gorilla glue, some polyurethane glue, and they're probably a bit on the big side, but they're only ones I've got long enough to be honest to go in. And we're going to see if we can't fix it. You're not alone. A little poly super update that's all glued I think it's a bit of a mess at the moment with the glue but that is absolutely solid now so I'll give it a bit of a scrape off and then it should be good to go again there we go I say sand it down, you could respray it, but you know what? That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the fact that it's usable again now, so I'll get it filled back with frames and then I can go go into storage now, but it's right to go for next year. Waste that one not. So coming to that point in the year where we're absolutely full to the brim with wax cappings. And we need to start thinking about processing them. Not only to get rid of them but to render our wax stone, render for our wax candles over the festive period. So when Darius came and brought us some equipment earlier on the season, 
This is one of the items he fetched with him. So it's the Tetron UK screw wax press. Now I did have a little play with this yesterday, just so I could get me out and around how it works. But to be completely honest, it's not difficult whatsoever. So as I said, I did two lots of wax. So each full basket will render down around two kilos of wax. And you can see from that, from the wax cappings, it's absolutely pristine. This one's just a touch darker. This had a little bit of brood comb in it, but with a little bit more processing, both absolutely usable as is. So what we have is a heated water jacket with water sump. We have a cappings basket and obviously our screw press lid. So I would say with the wax cappings straight from the supers, you wouldn't need to use the screw press whatsoever. But if you are thinking of rendering down any old brew comb or anything like that, the screw press really does get every little last scrap of wax out of those brood frames. It runs on a normal three pin plug in the UK. It really doesn't take long to get up to temperature either. So we'll load the wax basket with some fresh cappings and I'll show you how it works. So you can see the wasps are out in force this time of year. There's not much we can do other than a few traps out for them. So I'm going to load the basket. Just sits in like so. And then a screw press. Just tighten it down, because obviously that does get quite warm. And on the back, we've just got a simple on off switch. And that's on. So we're up to temperature now. It's bubbling like a kettle. And the wax is flowing. We've inevitably picked up a couple of wasps. They're just everywhere at the moment. We've got traps around the house around the kit, around the hives on the aprons as well, but they just seem to be more than ever this year. So what we'll do now is wait for that to all render down. It will start running considerably more than this. And then once it starts tailing off, we'll just keep refilling it. Once it cools down a tad while the water's nice and hot, then we're not having to reheat it each time then. And we'll get through this. I'm hoping to get at least 10 kilos of beeswax through, and then we'll refine it that little bit more. So Darius has two steam wax melters on offer. He's got the screw press option, which is around 680 pounds, if I remember rightly. And then a cheaper version, I think it's around 660, 670 pounds for just the square box wax melter. Although 600 pounds is still enough money, I can't get over the quality and the weight of the steam wax melter. Obviously that's been quite substantial. It was up to temperature, there's quite a lot of pressure in this water jacket. But the weight of it, the quality of it, all stainless steel. And I was really, really impressed of the quality of the wax that was coming out yesterday.